More than just a designer, Donna Karen became a critical voice in the women's wear conversation at a time when women's ways of representing themselves were proliferating at speed. Karen's forward-facing vision shaped how women dressed and approached their wardrobes. From her groundbreaking work at Anne Klein to the iconic Donna Karen New York and the youthful exuberance of DKNY, the designer built a legendary label which then became mired by an unfortunate acquisition. Despite controversies and setbacks, her name is still synonymous with innovation, practicality and an unwavering commitment to empowering women through clothing. Karen's career, spanning decades and defying trends, has undoubtedly left an indelible mark on the industry, influencing aesthetics and the very philosophy of how fashion interacts with the dynamic lives of modern women. Thanks so much for joining us here on Superlux. Remember, you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, YouTube and TikTok. Please like, comment and subscribe. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the multifaceted impact of Donna Karen, delving into her career milestones, controversies, design breakthroughs and enduring influence on both the fashion landscape and the broader societal conversation surrounding women's empowerment, practicality and personal expression through clothing. Through a closer examination of her iconic collections, brand philosophies and philanthropic endeavours, we will illuminate the essence of Karen's legacy and its continued relevance in today's ever-evolving world of fashion. Donna Karen's upbringing in Queens, New York, played a significant role in shaping her perspective and influencing her design philosophy. Queens is a melting pot of cultures and ethnicities, and this early exposure broadened Karen's understanding of different styles and aesthetics. This contributed to her ability to cater to a diverse clientele and create designs that resonated with a wider audience. Growing up in this bustling borough instilled in Karen a sense of practicality. The vibrant street life of Queens undoubtedly served as a constant source of inspiration for the young designer. The diverse styles and trends worn by everyday people fueled her creativity and influenced her focus on wearability and functionality. Queens offered a stark contrast to the often elitist world of high fashion. This grounded perspective led Karen to challenge industry norms and create fashion that was more accessible and practical for women who have busy and multifaceted lives. Surrounded by creative influences, her mother, a model and showroom representative, and her stepfather, a tailor. The young Donna displayed an early fascination with clothing and its power to express individuality. Though academically indifferent, she gravitated towards art and found solace in sketching designs. This passion led her to the prestigious Parsons School of Design, a decision encouraged by her mother's employer, the renowned designer Chester Weinberg. Parsons became more than just an educational institution, it served as a launching pad for Karen's meteoric rise. Surrounded by talented peers and mentored by industry giants like Louis Kinter, she honed her skills and developed a distinct design vision. At Parsons, Karen thrived on pushing boundaries and challenging conventions. Her designs, often inspired by her own active lifestyle, showcased an emerging signature, a blend of comfort and sophistication, a fusion of the practical and the stylish. These early efforts garnered recognition culminating in her selection for the prestigious Mademoiselle Guest Editor competition. This early taste of success solidified her confidence and determination to pave her own path in the fashion world, setting the stage for the revolutionary ideas that would define her career. While still a student, she landed a coveted summer internship at none other than Anne Klein, a pivotal experience that would shape her career trajectory. This early exposure to the fast-paced world of fashion design fueled her ambition and provided an invaluable training ground for the independent path that lay ahead. Whilst working at Anne Klein, Karen impressed with her quick grasp of trends and ability to translate Klein's vision into compelling designs. This initial stint blossomed into a full-time position. It was official, Donna had made it as a designer in the very real and very large world of women's fashion. Her dedication and talent saw her promoted, first to associate designer, then to head designer following Klein's tragic passing in 1974. Partnering with her classmate Louis Delolio, they breathed new life into the brand, injecting it with their modern aesthetic and focus on comfortable luxury. Their innovative Anne Klein II line, aimed at a younger, more budget-conscious customer, proved wildly successful, cementing their reputations as rising stars in the industry. Perhaps this was the seed for what would someday become DKNY. However, like most great creatives working behind someone else's vision, Karen felt a growing desire to express her unique artistry and build a name entirely for herself. In 1984, 
she took the bold step, leaving Anne Klein to launch her own label, Donna Karen New York. This wasn't just a brand. For Donna, it was a manifesto. In 1985, she unveiled her groundbreaking Seven Easy Pieces collection, and honestly, this changed fashion. Seven Easy Pieces birthed the modern concept of a capsule wardrobe, transforming the way women shop and dress. Karen's capsule wardrobe offered interchangeable pieces, items that would change throughout the years. The ultimate focus always being on empowering women to create stylish, individualised looks for every occasion with high-quality essentials. This collection wasn't just about fashion, it was about freedom, about respecting and valuing the busy lives of women and their need to look and feel polished but practical, without ever sacrificing style. The success of Donna Karen New York was undeniable, but Karen didn't stop there. Recognising the evolving needs of a younger generation, she would go on to launch DKNY, a diffusion line that embodied youthful energy, offering trend-driven pieces at more accessible price points. DKNY became a cultural phenomenon, worn by celebrities and embraced by young women on a global scale. Through both Donna Karen New York and DKNY, Karen was redefining what it meant to dress modern women, comfortable, confident and always ready to take on the world. So let's talk about Donna Karen's design legacy. The visual language of the Donna Karen brand goes beyond the literal items you'll see on the runway. There is a distinct philosophy driving this aesthetic that is credited with revolutionising how women dress and approach fashion. This philosophy, woven into the fabric of her label, emphasised empowerment, practicality and a seamless blend of comfort and sophistication. At the heart of Karen's vision lay a desire to meet the real needs of powerful, active, successful women. The iconic Seven Easy Pieces collection spoke directly to these women, embodying this idea perfectly. This capsule wardrobe wasn't just about fashion or looking nice. It certainly didn't pander to the male gaze. It was about offering women the flexibility and freedom to create multiple looks for work, leisure, and everything in between in a practical, sensible, sustainable way. The pieces were intentionally minimal because women didn't need more clothes that were as complicated and busy as their lives already were. The bodysuit to this day is still a standout piece. Each item focused on allowing women to move through their lives with confidence and ease. This message of empowerment continued through her designs. Her clothes weren't restrictive or trend-driven. They were crafted to accommodate busy lifestyles. Tailored pantsuits empowered women in the workplace while flowing dresses offered effortless elegance for social occasions. The Donna Karen woman had become a beacon of success, upward mobility and status. Karen's aesthetic can be described as a nuanced balance of refinement and effortlessness. She favoured clean lines, luxurious fabrics like cashmere and silk, and a neutral colour palette with pops of colour. Her signature draping technique created fluid silhouettes that accentuated the body without clinging to it. This combination of sophistication and comfort resonated with the minimalist lovers of the 90s. This was the definition of quiet luxury, and Karen a pioneer of this entire aesthetic that we are seeing re-explored and interpreted now. When we mention the likes of Calvin Klein and Prada, Donna Karen should be right at the centre of that conversation. While women's fashion remained her core focus, Karen also explored other avenues. Her foray into menswear, launched in 1992, reflected the same philosophy of comfortable sophistication. Additionally, her extensive accessory lines, encompassing handbags, jewellery and shoes, complemented her clothing and cemented her brand's holistic approach to style. A Donna Karen piece meant practicality meeting power. Gone were the days of rigid, uncomfortable suits dominating women's professional attire. Karen offered options that were as comfortable as they were stylish. The versatile pieces could be mixed and matched, empowering women to create polished looks for any occasion, from boardrooms to client meetings. This was about acknowledging the demands of modern women's lives and providing them with clothes that supported their professional aspirations too. A new era of power dressing without the flamboyance and cringe of the 80s. Pieces that have become timeless, that still work, even now. We are living through a quiet luxury craze. Sustainability buying less and focusing on better quality items is top of mind right now. But long before minimalist trends dominated social media, Karen pioneered this very concept of a capsule wardrobe. By offering interchangeable pieces in muted tones, she challenged heavy consumption and encouraged women to invest in quality basics that could be worn season after season. The plan here was to simplify decision-making, but also promote sustainability and mindful consumption, concepts that have only grown more relevant in today's eco-conscious climate. 
Karen also went beyond black and white. While the core seven easy pieces were primarily black and white, Karen championed versatility through layering and accessorizing. This encouraged women to express their individuality within a curated framework, breaking away from the monotony of traditional business attire. This empowered them to present themselves, not just as professionals, but as unique individuals, fostering a sense of confidence and self-expression. Karen was really crafting a fashion house that would become lifestyle brand, something that wasn't as common then as it has become. She understood that women craved not just style, but also comfort, multi-purpose items, and to feel like they were making savvy purchasing decisions. The seven easy pieces embodied this aspirational lifestyle, one where women could effortlessly juggle careers, families, and personal lives without sacrificing their sense of self or style. This holistic approach to branding was groundbreaking, influencing numerous designers who followed suit. And Donna took this vision and evolved it to encapsulate streetwear, broadening her reach. While Donna Karen New York catered to luxury consumers, DKNY democratised this vision. Prices were more accessible, the aesthetic youthful and vibrant, and the message clear. Fashion could be both cool and comfortable, empowering and relatable. DKNY broke away from traditional fashion boundaries. This wasn't about haute couture and elitism. It was about jeans, graphic tees and effortless edginess. Karen captured the zeitgeist of the 90s and early 2000s, a time of grunge, hip-hop and a burgeoning youth culture. DKNY did become a lifestyle brand. The stores were some of the first to have coffee bars in store. The iconic logo adorned everything from homeware and accessories to fragrances and eyewear. It wasn't just about wearing the brand, it was about belonging to a community, expressing individuality and embracing a youthful exuberance. From New York City streets to international runways, DKNY literally exploded. Celebrities like Kate Moss and Sarah Jessica Parker sported the brand, solidifying its cool factor. In fact, the infamous naked dress from Sex and the City was DKNY. This wasn't just American fashion, it was a global phenomenon. A box Karen had effectively managed to navigate her way out of, which many American designers before and since have never quite been able to do. While Donna Karen's achievements in fashion and philanthropy are undeniable, her trajectory has not been without its controversies. One particularly significant episode remains a dark stain on her otherwise commendable legacy. Her defence of Harvey Weinstein in the midst of his sexual misconduct allegations in 2017. Donna Karen made a series of comments that sparked outrage and controversy. In an interview, she stated, How do we display ourselves? How do we present ourselves as women? What are we asking for? Are we asking for it, you know? By presenting all the sensuality and all the sexuality, it's not Harvey Weinstein. These remarks, implying victim blaming and overlooking the power dynamics involved, were widely condemned by survivors, industry professionals and the general public. Karen's comments were met with immediate backlash, with many calling for boycotts of her brands and questioning her understanding of power dynamics and sexual assault. Recognising the severity of her misstep, she issued several apologies, stating that her comments were taken out of context and that she does not condone any behaviour that violates or abuses women. However, the damage was done, leaving a lasting stain on her reputation. It feels incredibly difficult to reconcile these disgusting and categorically incorrect comments with the mission to empower women. Somewhere along the way, it seems Karen lost touch with her original identity as an advocate and supporter of women, their autonomy and power. By 2001, things were changing for the brand. Donna Karen International, the company housing both the iconic Donna Karen and its younger, hipper sister DKNY was being sold. This wasn't just any sale, it was the culmination of a journey that began with audacious dreams, boardroom battles, and ultimately a changing fashion landscape. DKI had become a fashion powerhouse, but the winds of change were blowing. Luxury giant LVMH saw an opportunity to expand its American market share and snatch the brand up. This was supposed to be a match made in fashion heaven, but the cultural differences proved stark. Donna Karen, a visionary designer with a strong creative voice, clashed with the corporate structure of LVMH. Meanwhile, the fashion landscape itself was shifting. Athleisure was on the rise and the luxury market was becoming increasingly competitive. Despite attempts to revive the brand, LVMH struggled to replicate Donna Karen's magic touch. New designers came and went, but the iconic spark seemed lost. By 2016, with Donna Karen herself no longer at the helm and sales figures lagging, 
the decision was made. LVMH was selling. The buyer? G3 Apparel Group, a company known for its more accessible brands. This marked a new chapter for Donna Karen. The future was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The brand that once embodied power dressing for the boardroom was entering uncharted territory. The DKNY we've come to know hasn't retained its once prestigious legacy under the new owners. The focus on mass appeal lowered the brand's value and diminished its message. This felt like a loss for the house and for the past few years the brand has languished in a weird TK Maxx outlet kind of space. But in February of this year, the Donna Karen brand has been thrust back into the limelight, and this time it's looking like its old self again. Still under the umbrella of G3 Apparel Group, the Donna Karen brand has engaged eight legendary supermodels, such as Cindy Crawford, Linda Evangelista, and Leah Kibede, to feature in its In Women We Trust campaign, heralding the brand's revival. Captured by the lens of legendary Annie Leibovitz, this campaign is set to signify a rejuvenation of the brand's storied history and its forward trajectory, positioning Donna Karen New York as a purveyor of timeless elegance, the empowerment of women, and accessible luxury, all reimagined for the contemporary woman. The campaign is described not just as a promotional initiative, but as a potent representation of eight iconic women who capture the essence of Donna Karen's rich heritage, its current identity, and its aspirations for the future. We can't wait to see how the market responds with more quiet luxury players than ever to contend with. Perhaps the rise of brands like Kate, The Row and Phoebe Philo's eponymous launch inspired something in G3 Apparel Group and reminded everyone of Karen's keen eye for simplicity and refinement. Donna Karen's legacy was never just about clothes. Her design vision and aesthetic were born out of an intention to truly empower women challenge norms and leave a positive mark on the world of female-led fashion. Whether through her groundbreaking designs, philanthropic endeavours, or simply by inspiring future generations, her impact on fashion and society is undeniable. As the industry continues to evolve, and trends like quiet luxury float in and out of the cultural subconscious, Karen's name will always bear relevance. Thank you so much for watching. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple and Amazon Music. And you can catch us on YouTube, TikTok and Instagram at Superlux Source. Please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.